One of my fears, actually, or one of my concerns mm. about getting married and getting into an interable relationship was whether my wife, mm. you in this case, the person who I was going to marry, was going to be able to handle that scrutiny because for me yeah. that's been a. Everyone, welcome back to our channel. Welcome back. I'm Mayfair. I'm Winston. And we are. We are the Clemens. The Clemens. Well, that was kind of off. But whatever, it's good to be back. Um, and I don't know if you guys noticed anything a little different about today's video. Um, but we do have a new camera, so yeah, we should be glowing right now. Today is a really sunny day in London. Oh my gosh, but I think this camera gives it the, the extra, extra, extra touch of glow. Um, and honestly, it's because you guys have just been mad supportive, so we were like. We want to make sure that our audience has like the best We want to have the video, best content out there. The best video, Crisp. like the best sound and we're just going to keep upgrading. So please, please, if you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe. We drop a video every, every single week. Friday yep. um, and that's only going to increase. So I know sometimes when I don't subscribe to a channel, it's like your content's dope and all, but yeah. are you going to be here like next week? How regularly do you subscribe? Do you post? And we do post regularly. So if this is your vibe, definitely hit the subscribe button. Yeah, because we've seen incredible growth on our channel in just, you know, three Two, months three of months post posting consistently. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people do really say a lot of good things about our content. But what you might not realize is all of that was filmed on an iPhone. So, Literally, you know, th iPhone. things are only going to go up now that we've got a proper, proper vlogging camera. So we in this, we in this for the long run. Hit so. it and turn on the notifications. Exactly. Okay. So today's video is a juicy one. We're going to be talking about things that no one tells you about being in an interabled marriage. <laughs> yeah, this will be good. This will be good because... We see the comments, we see the assumptions, and I think there'll be a lot of nuggets here for people. And, and even just for building awareness mm -hmm. and education, because you might be in our position, or you might know people who are in our position. So yeah. this is one of those that you're going to want to share with your, your friends and your people. Yeah, and if you are in an interabled relationship, let us know as well. Like, do you resonate with this? Are there other things that you wish someone told you? Because I remember before kind of getting married, yeah. like none of my friends are in an interabled relationship. I don't know a lot of people who are, or I definitely do yeah. have someone in my circle that I could speak to. So this video would have been really, really useful just to have in my pocket. So mm -hmm. let's kick into it and make sure you stick around till the end because they're all, they're all juicy. But number five, like... Some You're going to want to be here for that one. Yeah, yeah. So let's kick things off. Let's so number one, the first thing that they don't tell you about being in an interabled relationship is people will ask intrusive questions. By people, we mean ev like people you don't even know will mm. ask intrusive questions. Yeah, so I think I can speak to this from a couple of different perspectives. So mm. perspective number one is, of course, I've had this throughout my whole life. Because yeah. I'm the one who's maybe slightly different mm -hmm. because I have a disability. So I've always had people come up to me and say, hey, and, you know, ask lots of questions. How do you drive a car? How do you, you know, work when I, when I used to work in corporate and all mm -hmm. of these things. And I think one of my fears, actually, or one of my concerns mm -hmm. about getting married and getting into an interable relationship was whether my wife, mm -hmm. you in this case... <laughs> The person who I was going to marry was going to be able to handle that scrutiny because for me yeah, that's been a, thing. it's been a day to day thing. So can be annoying, but I'm kind of used to it. Yeah. But I think for for you, you know, I was kind of wondering, you know, because it's completely new, I suppose. It is. Yeah. It's completely new, and you know, also the fact that people really have no boundaries sometimes, and like no boundaries. Yeah, like you know, I'll give one example from a personal perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, before getting married, you know, I'd be on stage speaking because I'm a motivational speaker and, you know, I'd give a talk and share some really good content, I mm -hmm. think, and then I'd open the floor for Q&A and, you know, I'd have a question like, yeah, but how do you have sex, Winston? Or, you know, hey, Winston, how do you, how do you shower? You know, mm -hmm. who washes you? All of these things. And so, you know, it, it's just strange to think that that is now being scrutinized on on oh, us on the, as a couple basis instead of, yeah. you know, 
as me as an individual so yeah and i think on that um yeah. i guess like kind of being newer to obviously like when we were friends before i could kind of see how yeah. people maybe interacted with winston or just honestly i'll just call it some of the strange interactions that we had with people so i kind of saw that but you know i think obviously like having a platform um like youtube that's growing all the time that only magnifies and yeah. increases and of, honestly like 90 percent of people are yeah. really respectful like really like sensitive even about the way that they ask questions um but it's that small percentage that it is like what bro what are you talking about man I think it took me aback like even though I was like I thought I was mentally prepared for it I feel like it's mm. the kind of thing that you can't really prepare for like. and also I, f I feel like with some people mm. the answer is, is never enough yeah oh my <laughs> gosh honestly like it would be like I think in that um the intimacy video yeah. that we did check out our intimacy video maybe we'll put we'll it like somewhere try and link it somewhere and it's like I uh, people were like how do you actually do it like yeah. I don't know what you want right exactly. now. Exactly. What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's... do you want? Yeah, we've, we've explained, you know, we have, you know, pretty much a normal yeah. intimate relationship. But people want to say, like, you know, but how do you actually do it? And it's like, you know, that sounds like a... A, a different website. <laughs> yeah, you. or a question for your biology teacher. For yeah, real, like... For real. It's so, a lot. So, so yeah, yeah, it is like having those boundaries. Yourself. Boundaries, because you can never satisfy everyone when it comes to these things. Mm -hmm. And I think you should also protect some of these things for the marriage as well. Definitely important. Okay, cool. So let's move on. So number two is people will assume you are not married. Oh, yeah. This is a big one. Like, I mean, I found it before <laughs> we got married. But I don't know, like, I guess, like, when you're in a relationship, you don't have, like, a ring on your hand, like, your husband isn't with you most of the time. I can get it, like, <clears throat> if I'll be walking, like, guys will hit on me or whatever, but th they may not assume, like, I'm married or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But there have been times, like, where, like, we've been together and people will just assume we're not married, yeah. I guess, because... Um, people can't fathom like interabled relationships or they don't come across them often like I remember we were in Dubai like that was it's a pretty conservative like yep. Dubai is pretty conservative there was a guy taxi driver like literally hitting on me while my husband was there yeah um when we went on our honeymoon this guy assumed you were my son <laughs> with a full grown beard <laughs> um so many Honestly. times in Valencia that happened actually people thought this one was my son mm -hmm. um yeah, and I guess like it comes from people not being used to seeing interabled relationships. And I've realized like so often people project whatever their reality is mm -hmm. on you. So just because you couldn't fathom being in an interabled relationship doesn't mean it's the same for someone else. Yeah. Um, and I'd say like that's the biggest lesson that I I could learn or hopefully impart is that like your reality is your reality but I think like humanity and just loving one another is accepting other people's realities yeah. that you can be curious you know you can ask <coughs> questions respectfully um, but yeah I think it's just accepting that just because something is different um, doesn't mean it's any any kind of less than but yeah that's yeah. like a massive thing people just mistaking Winston for my brother honestly my son yeah it happens a lot. Definitely not a brother. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's a big part of why we do what we do, why we create the content that we create mm -hmm. on this channel to, I guess, to create that representation because yeah. biases are real. You know, if you watch... Even unconsciously. Yeah, like people grow up watching, you know, TV, reading books, and mm. you don't often come across people or characters who are like us. Yeah. And so when you see Winston and his wife on the beach, that it just doesn't make sense. Because you've it just never seen it. Don't make before. sense. <laughs> what is this? And so, you know, people have all these questions and you know, you can't even blame them. Mm. But I think, you know, for us hopefully this creates a bit of a awareness and an education piece that kinda I guess just opens up another part of people's brains in terms yeah. of their so you know, their growth and just the different forms that relationships and marriage can take yeah exactly yeah, so yeah. that was a different one third one is oh yeah third one is about vows so yeah people don't tell you that you have to consider whether you're going to be sitting up or standing awesome. for your wedding vows mm -hmm. 
That was an interesting. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, yeah, that was even. I think it was maybe two weeks before our wedding. Yeah. When like... our pastors kind of brought up the conversation mm-hmm. about so. Have you guys decided what you're going to do? Are you going to be both be sitting up? Are you, you know, is Mayfair going to stand? Mm-hmm. How is it going to work? And up to that point, like, it's just never been anything that you just don't think crossed about my it. mind. Yeah. And I think in the end we decided to sit so that we could be on the same level. Yeah, and that was, I think I really, I'm really glad that we did that. Um, because, I don't know, like, our wedding was so, I think every wedding is, like, special the vows are so emotional for me and I think Mm. just being able to like look um you know my husband in the eye like look Winston in the eye say those vows was really special and important and also for me it was just that declaration that like I think when you're married it's a oneness so of course like I you know I'm differently able to Winston and like we both kind of accept that about one another but I think marriage is like a willingness to you know, both metaphorically and physically come down to one another's level and meet each other where you are. Mm-hmm. So I just thought it was like a beautiful representation of that and I wouldn't I wouldn't have it, you know, any other way. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and I'm super glad, you know, our pastor had the foresight to even... Mention it. Even we would mention have literally, it. I would, we wouldn't On the day we were kind of being like... Uh, <laughs> I don't you know. You don't. You don't. You don't stand. You know, like when people have that awkward, like yeah, because like, I have it all the time when people meet me for the first time. They don't know what to and do. And they don't like, should I crouch yeah, down? Because they're at standing level, oh. and I'm sitting, and then you have this awkward, like, should I like up and down, <laughs> up to side? So yeah, definitely don't want to be doing that on your on your wedding yeah, day. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. So number four, the fourth one is you can do a lot more than you think you can it's a it's a bit because again maybe a biased thing but people assume i think when people hear the word disability or see disability mm-hmm. they just assume restriction limitations yeah like a whole host of things that are not possible and i think that it also depends on the individual as well yeah because you know different individuals have I guess, different appetite for trying things. Mm. And I think, you know, from a young age, I've always had, you know, more of an appetite to, you know, give it a go and then decide whether or not it works for me. Mm. So, like, growing up, I remember, you know, my sisters got, you know, really little. My mom and my dad, they got us uh, bicycles, tricycles. Mm -hmm. Actually, they got them for my sisters first. And then I was like... "Uh, what about me? What about I want to get involved. <laughs> so in the end, we all had like our little tricycles and I kind of figured out a way to, to ride it and make it work. Mm. And I think, you know, that that sort of mindset has always stayed yeah. with me. Yeah. So like, of course, there's things that I've tried and be like, no, that's definitely not for me. Like, you know, yeah. But yeah. There, a, a lot of things I've, I've found, if I haven't found a way to do it, I've found an alternative that works. Like on our honeymoon. Like on our honeymoon. <laughs> So we had, we wanted to go, we went to this pretty cool, what's it called? It's like a science park with all of these. It had like different activities. Different activities, but it's huge. It's on like a huge site. Mm -hmm. And like really, it would take ages to walk from one end of it to the other because you got like Mm -hmm. the museum and you've got... It was like like, massive. Yeah, it's huge, huge. Mm -hmm. And so what a lot of people were doing was they were using bicycles. Mm Mm-hmm. And I was kind of like, ha, huh, like, that would be cool. But, like, the bicycles, obviously, they're quite big because they're, like, full, full-size full bicycles. Yeah. And then we, we noticed that some of the bicycles, you could ride them in tandem, so... Yeah, like, where you have, like, a seat where one person sits and then the other person cycles. Yeah, so, li- like, literally being a passenger on, like, a side passenger. Yeah, I'll on, try and find a picture. Yeah, or, like, we'll try a video and drop a picture and, one. like, put it somewhere here. But it's pretty cool. So, short story is, I got to go on a bike. Managed to ride a bike. That was pretty cool. We went on a boat. Went um, on a boat, yeah. What else? We went canoeing. Like, so many things. Kayaking, that you're, yeah. Kayaking, that was it. So many things that, like, I think, I think also, I am kind of that person who's like, babe, let's do this. Like, I don't care. Like, this I'm like, true. can this chair physically get on that <laughs> boat? Yes. Okay, cool. You need me to carry it? 
I'm gonna carry it. Like, <laughs> I just want him, like, I want us to try, like, as many things as, as we can. Like, I don't think because you're differently abled, yeah. um, you have to be, like, necessarily, like, restricted. Actually, even the spa was big for me because. Oh, yeah, like, you've never <laughs> been to a spa. I've never, I've, you know, like, literally, you know, f- before in my corporate career, I have traveled so much. Yeah. You know, I have stayed in some of the best, like, you know, hotels and things like that. Mm. But actually, that was one, maybe like a bit of a limiting belief that I had. I never really thought a spa would make sense for me. Mm -hmm. So I never really tried out those facilities until we went on honeymoon and you were kind of like, okay, we're going to the spa tomorrow, tomorrow's spa day. And yeah, it's really cool. really enjoyed my massage and the hot tub and all that good stuff. And now we do it all the time. (laughs) Like, we literally won't travel without going to the spa. So that's another thing. Like, don't feel like because you are getting an inter- interabled marriage you can't do um certain things that like other couples could enjoy there might be some things like i think when we we're on a holiday i went jet skiing but it can still be just as enjoyable like that you know talking about it like yeah yeah you you aren't by no means restricted to a life of people ask me like i think one of the questions as a comment i was like how do you make such a sacrifice or mayfair as an angel like i <laughs> I wish that I wish I was. I felt, wish I felt heroic, but we can do like most things. Um, and day to day, like our life is like probably like most other couples. Mm-hmm. So can we move on to the next one. The fifth and final one. The fifth and final one is you're going to be seen as an inspiration mm. for other people. Yeah. So you are going to be seen as an inspiration, and I think <clears throat> you know, for me again. I kind of always had a few comments here and there mm. from people because I'm quite independent and people see me out and about and stuff like that and they'll come up to me and, mm, yeah. you know, sometimes they'll say really nice things. But, mm-hmm. you know, how was it for you, like, you know, when when we've been out together? Yeah. How have you found the sort of feedback or even online because we get a lot of comments online Yeah, with people it- saying they're inspired and touched and things like that? Definitely, because it's been interesting because like we mentioned in the beginning, you've got that kind of small percentage of people who um i whether it's like project their fears onto you whatever it is but then you have these encounters like i think i feel them especially in person where it's like i don't even know what it is but it's like people can just see and feel god through our relationship like so many times it's happened like even in dubai like this you know guy i don't know if you're watching in his name we just called him <laughs> uncle but like if you're watching like it was such a pleasure to meet you but i don't know like people would just be moved i guess because of the representation of love like again like we believe in christian marriage and for yeah. us that is like a representation of just christ loving his church a love that goes way beyond um what someone might consider a physical limitation yeah. and i guess when people get to see that like in real life like it's it's moving mm-hmm. um because it is a representation of like christ in the church like all marriage is supposed to be and i think genuinely all marriages should move people because yeah. it is it reflects the picture and the love that christ had for his church and that's mm-hmm. the most beautiful thing that you can reflect that you can have the privilege of reflecting on you know all being perfectly so yeah it's been like crazy for me because i don't get it i'm like they don't we we haven't said a word to them like winston's a motivational speaker i'm a coach so we speak life into people all the time yeah but many of our encounters will just be walking down the street or just happy be having like a drink um and people are moved. do you remember that guy on our first date yeah that was weird (laughs) it was beautiful but it was weird like he was like he was having like a moment with god yeah. We weren't even doing it. We were just walking and he just started having like a moment with God. Yeah. And we were just observing like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he, something was, he was experiencing something. Yeah, j- just by seeing just, us. Yeah, just, yeah, exactly. And I think I felt it as well, I guess, during our engagement and also the wedding, obviously. But I think the engagement, when we posted that first couple of pictures. Oh, yeah. That and, was... you know, a lot of people commented, you know, people within our network and, Beyond. you know, family and, you know, people all over the world. But I think a lot of the comments, you know, the, the started to become a theme emerging in the mm. comments, which was, oh, my God, like, you know, glory to God, you know, yeah. praise Jehovah, praise Jesus. And, you know, I think it's it's a blessing. Yeah. Because for us, we just see ourselves as any other couple. Yeah. You know, from your perspective, from your side of the lens, it, we probably look mm. a lot different or pretty unique. But to us, we're just 
an everyday couple and for for God to even be able to use us in that way is, is more than anything we could ever dream of. And, you know, if us being together makes someone go on Google and type what is the Bible or who is Jesus, then wow. That's wow, wow, wow. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, so that's, that's the one that we had, number five. And definitely, guys, please, please do not quit this video without subscribing. Honestly, please because don't. I think 80% of people who watch our videos actually aren't subscribers. Um, but we, we drop videos regularly. Like, if you are enjoying this content, please subscribe. It really helps us in terms of visibility, um, getting our content to the people who really want it and need it most. So hit the subscribe button, share with your friend, tell them to subscribe as well, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, okay. <laughs> Babe, are you ready to film? Yeah. <laughs> are you tired of me? Yeah. Well, no one, nobody tells you about marriage is. Sorry. Keep, I yeah. <laughs>